Welcome back. Let's look at compound interest. Now, compound interest is supposed to be the better interest because you earn interest on your interest. So your money works for you just faster. With compound interest, we have interest amount that increases after every period. The compound interest allow interest to be earned on interest, like I just said. This means that the investment amount is constantly growing or constantly changing. Compound interest can be compounded monthly, quarterly, biannually, or the same with half yearly, six monthly, or semi-annually. That is all one and the same thing. And annually or yearly. That's just synonyms. So, for example, the interest rate of 12% can be compounded as follows. If it's monthly, the interest rate will be 12, 12 times a year. So you need to divide your rate by 12. Why? If we look at a one-year period. Over this one year, we need to earn 12% interest. But I can't earn 12% in January, 12 in February, 12 in March, going on up to 12 in December. That doesn't make any sense. I can't do that. So the 12 is going to be divided by 12. So it's 1% in January, 1% in February, going onwards. Quarterly is four times a year, so I'm going to take my year and I'm going to divide it into four. So after the first term, it would be 3%. Then in the half of the year, another 3%. In the third term, another 3%. And that is how we're going to calculate it there. Then half yearly is every two months. So I'm going to earn interest for this part and then interest for the next one. And then annually is one time or once in a year. So there, if you really want to, you can divide by one, but we know it's not necessary. So if I invest annually, it would be the whole 12%. Let's look at an example. Mpumi needs to travel to Asia in 2025. She decides to invest the 30,000 Rand she won from a dance competition. She accepts a compound interest rate of 6.5% interest per annum, so it's per year, compounded annually, so that is per year, and her interest rate is also calculated per year. Calculate the money she will have available after two years. So what do we have? We have our initial value. We've got our interest rate. We've got our compounded annually. So how the interest is compounded and our time period for two years. So when we look at year one we calculate her interest rate. So it's going to be 30,000 times the 6.5%. And that is 1,950. Now remember, if this was simple interest, that amount would have stayed the same. But now, because it's compound and we earn interest on interest, we need to say, the new amount for the next year is going to be 30,000 plus my interest rate, 1,950. And then that is 31,950. Then we go into our second year. Now we use our lump sum for year one as the initial value for year two. 
So it's 31,950 times our interest rate, 6,5%. And that is going to be 2,076 rand, 75, meaning at the end of the two years, she will be left with the following. The 31,950 for the end of the first year, plus the interest, and then her total investment will be 32,076,75. Let's look at this. Can you see the interest rate remains the same, but the initial value changes every time because my interest is changing. Yolanda is in grade 11 and wants to study BCom after matric. To be able to register for the first year of study, her father decided to save 5,000 Rand per month starting from the end of November to the end of 2020. So he's starting from the end of November 2019 up to the end of 2020. The total amount of 60,000 at the end of November, that is what he saved up, was then invested for one year in a tax-free savings account, he was quite smart there, with an interest rate of 5,2%. Calculate the final amount they will receive at the end of the November 2021. So this is only for one year that he is going to invest. But what did we miss? The interest is compounded semi-annually, meaning in that one year, he is going to earn interest two times or twice. So the first half year is going to be 60,000 times, what do we need to do? We need to take that 5,2 and divide by 2%. Why? Because it's semi-annually and that is the same as 60,000 times by 2,6%. I hope you got what I said just now. And that is then 1,560. So at the end of the first half of the year, he's ending with 60,000 plus 1,560. So that is then 61,560. Going to the second half here, let's make a space for the second half here. Now he starts with that part. So now what's happening is he is starting with the 61,560 times the 2,6% and that is then going to be 1,600,56. So at the end of the year, it would have been 61,560 plus the 16,056. And then they would have saved up 36,160,56. Uh, 36, so at the end of the year, they saved 63,160 rand and 56 cents. Now that was quite a good move. Let's look at the difference between compound and simple interest. Now, first of all, simple interest, interest is calculated as a once-off percentage of the amount of money 
that you borrow or save. Where compound interest is also calculated as a percentage, but unlike simple interest, compound interest is calculated on the changed amounts. So simple interest, the amount remains the same. Compound interest, it's calculated on changed amounts. Then, with simple interest, the interest calculation is always done on the original amount of the savings and or the loan. And then compound interest is the interest is calculated on the changed amount and therefore refer to interest on interest. Then also with simple interest, the interest amount is only added to the principal at the end of the term where with compound interest, it is at the end of every interval it's added and not only at the end of the term. And then lastly, since the growth is constant, the growth can be represented as a straight line with simple interest, but with compound interest, the growth is exponentially and will therefore be represented as a curve. So if we look at it as a graph, there is a green graph there, there is the green graph, and then it looks like a somewhat of a curve on the blue graph. So the green graph will be your simple interest because it's constant growth, and then the blue graph is your compound interest because it grows exponentially. If the graph was for longer time periods, you would have seen that it would have started in making a curve like that. And that brings us to the end of today's lesson. I hope to see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.